Thank you, Debza, for this question. Look at what we are working with. So with this particular question, it says that Vinolia Ratebe owns a piece of land wherein she, she intends to plant vegetables. So you can see that the piece of land, guys, anytime you see something that is irregular, something that is irregular is a shape that does not have a name. This is an irregular shape. So this is the land that this person has purchased. And it says to us, the fertilizer that she intends to use has a coverage of 1.5. I'm going to write it on the side because it is not visible properly. It's 1.5 meter square. And this 1.5 meter square covers a bag. So per bag. I'm just rewriting that because it's not visible. And it says to us, she also wants to erect a fence around outside the piece of the land. So it's going to go around like this. Already I have a feeling we might be asked something um, to do with perimeter. So that's the fence and that's where the fence would go. The fence will be supported by wooden poles that will be spaced two meters apart from each other. So if one pole is over here, it means that two meters apart from that would be another pole and another pole and another pole and so on and so on. So that is some really important information to have. So we've got the poles. I'm just going to write all the givens here, which are two meters apart. Very useful information for us to have in order to answer this particular question. So let's look at the first question that we have been given. Did you see how I first went and analyzed, pulled apart, um, and then we're coming to answer the questions? I always like to just do the analysis first so that I'm not caught off guard when I have to answer the questions. So this, the first question says to us, define the term perimeter. And, and do you remember what I said to you guys? That I am sensing a perimeter question even before I read this. So it says to us that we need to define the term perimeter. And as you know, in maths literacy, you don't want to skip um, the definitions because you never know when you could be asked a definition. Perimeter is the sum of the size of the shape. Okay, so let's write that down. Perimeter is... The sum, the sum just means that you're adding all the sides together, okay? The sum of the sides of the shape. Or some people could say, um, let me just write that properly for distraction's sake. Or you could say that it's the borders, the sum of the borders. Because every shape has a border in it, okay? Always remember, guys, you need to remember how and what it is that you are calculating. So perimeter, we know that it's the sum of the borders. Sum means you're just adding all the sides that have been given to you. The second question says to us, calculate the area of the rectangular portion piece of the land. So we have to look at the rectangular piece. And the nice thing about measurement is that formulas are given to you guys. So don't panic when it comes to formulas. And I always tell my learners, do not panic when it comes to the formulas. What you need to know is how to calculate using that particular formula. Because you can be given the formula and not know how to use it. Okay? So we've been given the area of a rectangular shape and that equals to length times breadth. So area of rectangle, I'm going to do that, is equal to length times breadth. The length of this rectangle is the longer side over there. It's 23 meters. And the breadth is 14. We can see the breadth right here. 14 meters. So guys, this is the rectangle, okay? Please don't get that confused. This is the rectangle. So... I'll just do that with it so we can see what we are talking about. 14 meters. 
Let's go use our calculator. That's going to be 23 times 14, which is 322 meter square. Why is it meter square? It's meter square because you are calculating area and area is square. And in terms of area being square, um, you are multiplying two dimensions by each other. That's where the square comes from. Two dimensions with each other being the length and the breadth. So it's 322 meters square, the area, okay? The next question says to us, calculate the area of the triangular portion. So the triangular portion is then the second portion um, as I said, if you have an irregular shape, what you need to do is that you take the two shapes and you pull them apart. Even if it's three shapes, don't be scared. Take the three shapes, pull them apart, and then at the end when they're asking for the total, you just add them together again. So the formula for the area of a triangular shape is half times base times height. Some formulas will just say half base times height. So area of a triangle is equal to half times base times height. Let's go see what it is that we are talking about. So now, let me just make this particular area clean for us. So this is the triangle that I'm talking about. And as you can see over here, we don't have a proper measurement from here to here here to here. We don't have a proper measurement. However, we do have the measurement from here all the way to here. So what we can do is first subtract those two from each other. How are we going to subtract it? We're going to subtract this 23 over here, which belongs to this shape like this. So it's going to be 35 minus 23. That is going to be our base. 35 minus 23. So our base is then going to be 12 meters. So don't be scared when you see a question like this. Ask yourself, what am I given? Let's go down and see. Therefore, half times 12 meters. Let's go see what the height is. Why did I choose that as the base? Because that's what the triangle would stand on if it was required to stand. The base is what it stands on. The height is then going to be this perpendicular to the right angle triangle. So it's going to look like that. Okay, that's the height. This height is equal to this height over here. Why is it equal? Because we have a right angle triangle over here, it makes this a rectangle. It makes this a rectangle. The properties of a rectangle is that the opposite sides are equal to each other, meaning this is also going to be 14 meters. You need to know the properties. You need to know how to use the properties as well because the properties are going to help you. Okay, look at me now rewriting that half over there. I'm going to put it in my calculator. Okay, half is 0 0,5, or you could use it using um, the fractions in the calculator being that function over there, 1 over 2, and I choose not to use it. I don't want to use it like that. I want to use 0 0,5, so I'm going to use 0 0,5. So it's 0 0,5 times 12, because it's 12 meters times 14 meters. So that's going to give us 84. 84 meter square. Okay? Stunning. So you can see now that it's one piece of land, but it consists of a rectangle and it consists of a triangle. So now I found the area of the rectangle and I found the area of the triangle. Guys, it's important for you to know the properties of shapes. Why is it important? Because sometimes you are only given one side of a shape. 
Sometimes you're given a square and then you're given one side of the square and you need to know that all the sides of a square are equal. It's very important to know that. Okay. So number four says to us, calculate the total area. And you remember what I said to you guys, you would calculate the two separately and then you go and you add them. So total area. is equals to area of rectangle plus area of triangle. You can write it out if you want. So the area of the triangle, we already know. Sorry about that. It's going to be, oh, there we go. I thought I didn't write that square over there. 84 meters square. And then I think it's 322. 322 meters square. Some people would ask, is it, is it necessary for me to write these over there? It's not necessary. You don't have to. It's the second step. However, it's important for you to write them in the answer. Okay. I'm going to leave that as it is and just add 322, which gives me 406. 406 meters square. So whenever you see an irregular shape, don't panic. Try to find the familiar shapes within that shape. Sometimes, guys, it's going to be a semicircle that's combined with a square or a semicircle that's combined with a rectangle. So just take the two, separate them, find the separate areas, and then add them together. Number five says, how many bags of fertilizer will Vinolia need to fertilize the whole piece of land? For us to know how many bags of fertilizer, we need to take the square meter for one bag and we need to divide it by the total area. Anytime you see the words how many, you know that you are going um, to divide. Not all the time, but most of the time. How many means you're going to be dividing something into something. In this particular case, we're dividing one bag into the entire area. Okay, let's do that. So it's going to be total um, area divided by one bag. And another thing that you need to know is that it's going to be meter square over meter square. You can't do anything besides that otherwise you're not going to be getting the how many in it so it's 406 all over 1.5 where did i get the 1.5 because i was told that one bag here one bag is going to cover 1.5 square meters meters square well de depends on what you want to call it some people are very fussy um, about that but I'm not one of those people. Let's go in. 406, I'm going to leave it as it is. Okay, maybe let's just not. 406 divided by 1.5. 270. 270.67. Okay. Now listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. They're asking us how many bags of fertilizer she is going to need. You cannot go to the shop and ask for 0 0.67 bags of fertilizer. You cannot do that. So you have to round it up because if you only ask for 270 bags um, of fertilizer, then you are going to be short on your fertilizer. So you would rather buy extra fertilizer and then there's just a little bit of fertilizer that is left. That's the only time you can round up or round down, guys. If you're going to the store and you need to buy something or you've been asked to round up or round down. So in this particular case, we're going to round up, which is going to make it 200 and 71 bags of fertilizer. Nice one. So this particular paper doesn't tell us 
Debza. Um, it doesn't tell us how many marks each question would get, but I love this because these are the type of questions that you are going to be getting in your exam. Um, even if it's not necessarily to do with land and fertilizer, but your how many, your area, you know, those are the type of things that you should be expecting. So the last question that belongs to the, the, the questions that Debza sent us says to us, how many wooden poles now the poles are coming in. You remember we had that information on the poles. So we were told that the poles are going to be two meters apart. I'm already trying to think of how you would do that. So the poles are going to be two meters apart. And it says to us, how many wooden poles um, would Vanola use for this? In order for you to do a question like this, I personally think you would have to find out how many poles um, would go into maybe each length or we would use the perimeter and then find out how many poles can go in using that particular perimeter. Let me try <laughs> because we are being told that these are two meters apart. So how would I do a question like this one? So number six, if we were to calculate the perimeter the perimeter would be 14 plus 36 plus 23 plus 18. Is it 36 or 35? Let's just go up and check. It's 35 because it's the whole thing, okay? So it's 14 plus 35, plus 23, plus 18. Yes, it's four sides. Let's go add that. 35 plus 14 plus 23 plus 18 is 90. So the perimeter is 90 meters. So we want to go and we want to see, um, and you remember when I said to you guys, the how many is basically telling you, um, it's telling you you're going to be dividing something with something, okay? So I'm dividing meters with meters. So in this case, I'm dividing it with the two meters. So 90, don't be scared to use your calculators, guys. No one's going to judge you. 45 poles. So 35 poles would fit in this particular question that we are talking about.